Hey, Skylar here from the Mint Change You Can Wear. Today we're going to be making the mother of all coin rings out of this, a one ounce gold eagle. So if you want to learn how to deface an incredibly expensive coin, stick around. The first thing we need to talk about is hole size. What hole are we going to cut into this coin to make the ring we need to make? When I'm working with one ounce gold eagles, uh, a main concern for me is splitting the coin accidentally. You don't want to do that. You really don't want to do that. So what I do for hole size is I I cut a 9 16 inch hole. And what that does is it allows the date to remain there completely, but it eliminates some of the risk of actually splitting the coin. And what I use to get that coin perfectly centered is the auto punch from Jason's Works. But basically, it is the best tool you can use to cut a hole in your coin ring. It's just hands down. But the problem is it doesn't come with a 9 16 inch punch. So what we're going to do is punch a half inch hole in the coin first, and then I'll center it in the disc cutter and cut that last little bit out. So what I've selected is the half inch punch and it comes with the, the die that we put in there. Now I normally don't do this step on other coin rings, but when you're doing a gold one, you want to do everything you possibly can to get it centered. I put a piece of tissue paper down on this platform before I put this die in just to take up any slack that might be there. Just like that. That is nice and snug and ready to go. It's set on top of this platform and see how that top is pitched. What that's going to do as you screw it down is perfectly center the coin on the platform ready to cut until it's nice and snug. Now the next step is to put our half inch punch in there. But first thing we're going to do is put a little bit of a dry lube on it. You can use Burr Life or Pepe Lube and then we'll hammer it down with a brass mallet. All right, now we're cut through. This is a disc cutter by Pepe Tools. The good thing about these is you can open them up, line the coin up, and then clamp it down so that way the coin's not going anywhere. This is a centering tool to center the hole that we have already cut in our coin. So we'll slide that down there. See, it looks really good. So we are good to punch this thing out. And what we use to cut this thing out with is a six ton A-frame press by Harbor Freight. And cut it out. And this is the little bit of uh, scrap that we get out of it. It's not a lot, but I tell you right now, it makes a big difference in uh, reducing the risk of splitting this coin as we make it. And now what we need to do is use a deburring tool, this guy right here, to deburr the cut edge that we just made. It's going to reduce the chance of splitting. You don't want it to split as we start to bend it. And the other thing is it's gonna make it more comfortable when it turns into a ring. You want that to be beveled and curved so that way it's not sharp on your finger where you're wearing it. Once we have that done, use a little piece of 120 grit sandpaper, 240 grit sandpaper, something like that. And we will just make sure we sand the inside of that cut edge now to make sure we don't have any burrs, any chinks in it at all. We want it to be perfectly smooth before we start to bend it. Now that that's done, it's time to anneal. So we're just annealing it until it turns that dark purple color. Oh, right there. That is the look we're looking for, that purplish color. You don't want to under anneal it to where it's not quite there yet because it'll split as you do it. And you don't want to over anneal it because then the surface will start to bubble up just a tiny bit. All right, so now we'll quench it. All right, we're going to start folding now. Here's what we're going to be using to fold it. A one ton Arbor Press from Harbor Freight. Jason's 1.3, 1 1.4, 17 degree die. We'll be using the 1.3 side. And a universal stainless steel folding cone or a folding mandrel, whatever you call it. And we're going to be wrapping this with Teflon tape to make sure there's never any gold to steel contact at all. Wrap this about two to three layers thick with Teflon tape. And we'll line it up underneath the Arbor Press. All right, this guys is the most dangerous part of the whole coin ring process or one of the most dangerous parts. Really feel the coin. It feels like it's getting too stiff. Stop right away, re-anneal it and bring it back here again. If you overdo it here, you'll split it and that'll cost you a bundle, so don't do it. Slow and steady. Just make sure it's lined up as you do it. Keep relining it up. Take your time. All right, I'm gonna stop right there and we're gonna re-anneal it just to be double safe. That's about how far we've got right there. And what we're gonna do is re-anneal it and then re-sand that cut edge 
just to make sure we're not seeing any cracks forming. If you see a crack forming, now's the time to take care of it before it gets big. And just like before, I'm using a regular propane torch, taking my time and waiting for it to turn that purple color. And unlike ferrous metals, quenching it actually doesn't harden it like it would like a steel or iron or something like that. Um, Non-ferrous metals like gold and silver and copper, they don't harden like that. Totally different animal. All right, there's that purple color we're looking for again. And we'll go ahead and quench it. Now we're going to sand this edge and inspect it for cracks. All right, you can see now we're looking really close at this thing to see if there's any cracks or micro anything out of the ordinary. All you want to see is perfectly smooth. So that is pretty much where we are now. Now that we're re-annealed, we're sanded, we're going back to folding it some more. And the key here is to close this thing all the way up on this folding mandrel and try keeping it perfectly level as you do so. All right, I think we are there. Let's take a look at it. Here is what we came up with now. You can see it's totally closed up on that mandrel and that's what we're looking for. And you can double check it by pulling off and seeing if there's an indentation. And there is a nice indentation all the way around. We did a good job. So it's time to re-anneal and then go from there. Now that we've made it this far, we need to start talking about ring size. If I was to throw this on the ring stretcher right now, you'd probably stretch it out to right around a size 16. And what we want to do in order to size this is be three sizes larger than our target size. And that's it. So if that was the case, if it was a 16, if we were making a size 13 ring, we'd be right on the button. But if we need to make it larger, we need to stretch it beyond the 16 to, you know, whatever three sizes larger than our target size would be. But if we're doing it smaller, we need to Swedish wrap it. So I need to make this thing into a size nine and a half. And in order to do that, I need to Swedish wrap this thing down to a 12 and a half. So that is going to be our next step. First step is wrap this thing in Teflon tape. I use a good Teflon tape from Lowe's, not that cheap stuff from Harbor Freight, and wrap it 25 to 30 times. And hey, let's face it, Teflon's cheap. Let's just do 30, right? No big deal. Now that we're all wrapped and ready to go, we're going to get Jason's Works 1.0 by 1.4 Swedish wrap die. It's a larger one. Put it in there coin edge side up, and then we will press it down. Now we could use the brass plungers that come with Jason's dies, or we could use one of these Ross coin ring followers, coin ring pushers. I really like these things. It just doesn't, you don't have to unwrap and rewrap coins all the time, and you can do it in one fluid motion. So we'll just put that down in there and press it down. And remember with this, just slow and steady, slow and steady. All right, I think we are good. And here's what we came up with. The detail is still saved. Uh, you can see it hasn't come through the Teflon tape, which is exactly what we're looking for. We'll peel that off. Still gorgeous. Good deal. So now what we're going to do is re-anneal it and then stretch it out. Like I said, three sizes larger than our target size. I'm going for a nine and a half. So that means I'm going to stretch it out to a 12 and a half. Now we're gonna take our gold eagle coin ring edge side, coin edge side up and put it onto our ring stretcher. But remember that steel to gold contact we want to avoid because we want all that detail on the inside still. So what we're gonna do is double up a grocery bag over the top of the splines to make darn sure nothing touches that gold. So we want it to be perfect when we're done. Okay, we'll bring it down till it's snug and then we're gonna give it a crank and then turn this a quarter turn every time we stretch it and pull it off and check it off. And, and what we're looking to do is close this thing completely up on this ring stretcher. Now that we have this thing stretched out to three sizes above our target size, which for my case is a nine and a half, now we're gonna reduce it down to a full size below the target size, which is an eight and a half. And the reason we're doing that is we want this to be a nine and a half when we're finished, but there's a sharp edge inside the ring. We need to get rid of that in order to make it comfortable to wear. So if you reduce it down a full size below the target size, when you get done cleaning that edge up, it'll be exactly the size you need it to be. For my purposes, I'm going to use the die plate on the bottom of the Durston ring stretcher. If you have a Chinese ring stretcher, like one of those blue ones over there, you would use one of Jason's Works dies, the 17 degree dies. 
And make sure you use a little Pepe Lube or Burr Life on the coin edge side that we're going to be reducing. So that way it slides nice and smoothly down the die. Give it a couple taps just to make sure it's nice and level. Now slowly reduce it. Stop and check it often. So that is beginning to straighten out now. And what we're really looking to do is if you over reduce it in a 17 degree die, see those little tiny stars in the, towards the outer edge? Those are the first line to get smushed and you don't want to smush those. So bring it down to almost your target size, I would say within half a size of a nine and a half, and then finish it off in a doming block or a 25 degree die of Jason's. I have my doming block inside my six ton A-frame press. I get some of that Pepe Lube Burr Life again on that to make it slide easily in the dapping block. And what we use to press it down inside of a six ton press is one of Jason Works coin ring anvils. It just gives you nice even pressure as you're pressing. All right, I'm gonna do one press and take a look at it. So this is what I've come up with. It is exactly on eight and a half. And now we have a taper, you know, going the other way. So what we're gonna do now is reduce this side to make it match the other side, make it perfectly symmetrical. All right, this is what we came up with. Beautifully even, sitting exactly at eight and a half. And now we have to very, very carefully remove that sharp edge on the inside of the coin ring with a deburring tool. Now take your time, check often. Do not hit the detail on the inside. Now we have it deburred on the inside. There's no sharp edges, it's not rough, it's nice and rounded. And, but it does have a little bit of chatter marks from the deburring tool, so we need to get rid of that. And the way we do that, back to our sandpaper again, and just slowly and carefully sand it inside until it's perfectly smooth. All right, if you've made it this far and you've got a nice looking coin ring, now it's time to finish it. And what we use to finish it is some 4-0 steel wool just to get some of that dark off of it. And then we'll polish it out. Start real gently on the inside. Then we'll do the coin edge side. Now we're gonna carefully do that outside. Now I'm trying to intentionally leave some of this black on there because it looks good when you're finished. It gives a little contrast. But if you wanted to, you can keep going and totally remove it and then polish out. You have just a perfectly polished gold coin ring. And so now the next step, I have a disposable jewelry wipe I get from Walmart and we're gonna polish, we're gonna polish this thing out. All right guys, that was how to make a one ounce gold eagle coin ring. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. And if you wanna check out some coin rings that I make, go to www.changecanwear.net. You can see them for sale there. And also you can sign up for a coin ring workshop there as well. All right, guys. Thank you very much.